So, we're missing about half of the room, so hopefully some people will, uh, will filter in. Um, I recognize the majority of you, there's a few faces I don't recognize, so I just want to take the time to introduce myself, introduce my team and the presenters today. My name is Dr. Marley Smith. Our first presenter is Dr. Heather Smith. We're both health and wellness experts that specialize in the spine and the nervous system. And then Roxanne back there and Allie here, they are our A team. They're literally rock stars. If you're a patient in the clinic, you know how awesome they are. We just love and appreciate those two ladies. And then our second speaker of the day is going to be Monica Taylor Lee. She is a massage therapist, but also a craniosacral therapist. Um, we refer a lot of patients to her. She gets absolutely phenomenal results. And she is literally above and beyond any uh, massage therapist here in town. The reason being is she just has a higher level of education than any other massage therapist I have ever seen. She has an absolutely booming, thriving practice. She does phenomenal work. So I'm excited to see what she brings to the table today. Now, there's obviously another group of people that I have to recognize, and that's you guys. It is a Saturday morning. It's probably like the last nice Saturday morning. We're going to get in a while, and you are here to learn more about your health. And I can't tell you how much that just warms my heart as a health and wellness expert. Um, you guys are the ones that truly take responsibility for your health. You are the action takers. You take ownership over your health. And you guys are going to be the ones that get better health outcomes than everyone else. So I want to recognize you and acknowledge you for that. Come on in. Okay. Now we are all here for one reason, right? Headaches. So I know some about this group of people. I know either you're, you suffer from headaches in some form, or you know somebody that suffers from headaches, and you are here because you want a solution, right? Whether it's for you or for somebody else. So that's why we're here, is we're here to provide you with a solution. So we want you to get the most out of this discussion. We want you to get the most out of this presentation. So I'm going to ask three commitments of you, OK? Number one, we just got to be present. Can we listen? I know we can all do that, right? Number two, I want you to engage. I want you to have fun. I think Allie actually locked the door, so we're all stuck in here <laughs> for the next hour. So let's actually have some fun, engage. Let's create a discussion with Dr. Heather. I know she's going to throw out a couple jokes. She might be borderline inappropriate sometimes. <laughs> so I know we're going to have uh, I know we're gonna have some fun. And number three, you guys have already taken action by being here today, but at the end of this, I want you to take massive action. I want you to implement at least one thing that you can do immediately um, once you leave here, okay? Not tomorrow, not next week, uh, because we know knowledge is power, right? But it's only powerful if we use it. So please, learn something here today and apply it immediately. Cool? All right, with that said, without further ado, our first speaker for today, my chiropractor, the best chiropractor in town, <laughs> a genius in the middle space, Dr. Heather Smith. Thank you. All right, everybody. So just from a show of hands, because like Dr. Riley said, I know a lot of you out here, and I'm excited every one of you are here. But for those that I don't know, I am curious, who in here struggles with headaches? So it's pretty much the crowd, right? And if it's not that you struggle with headaches, maybe you have in the past or maybe some of you know does, but I'm going to be speaking to you, the crowd today, as though you've all struggled or are currently struggling with headaches. I mean, no, no disrespect by that, but just a heads up there. Um, I want to just kind of like dive right in because, well, I, I mean, Dr. Marley already did the introduction. So we're going to talk about headaches. Now, we can look around the room today, you guys, and we can see that headaches do not, um, you know, what I want to say is they're, they diversify. It doesn't matter who you are you know, what gender you are, what job you have, your demographic, headaches, you can still be plagued by headaches. So it's not like you're doing something that you possibly shouldn't be doing and everyone who does that has headaches, right? So, uh, you know, there's no judgment when it comes to headaches, we can all have them. But I also know something else and that is that headaches a lot of the time are correctable and they're preventable. But what we're doing wrong is we're treating the headache rather than finding the cause of the headache. So we're here today with two different approaches to help, hopefully help you guys get to the root causes of your headaches. Now, I know it's a big deal. I know headaches are more than just an annoyance. I know, they're, I know they ruin people's lives. I mean, it, it breaks my heart how many times I meet a patient that says, 
like their marriage is suffering because of their headaches. They don't get to be the parent that they want. They have to call out of work all the time. Sometimes their kids miss school because their kids have headaches. Like headaches aren't just something that we should have to put up with. Um, and they aren't just something that's like really a simple little thing that we can ignore. For some people, headaches literally destroy their life and we want to help you guys find the answer. So, let's start with a joke, right? Um, I'll let everybody read it. <laughs> now, who actually knew Big Pharma had something accurate on a ball, right? To stay away from kids when we have headaches. Um, no, I mean, in all seriousness, I don't encourage aspirin with your headaches, but possibly staying away from kids. Uh, can, because that will definitely help. Now, here we go, guys, straight from the World Health Organization. The reason this is important to me, ooh, it works, it, is because most people think chiropractors are bone doctors, that we're just cracking bones and that's all we do, but that's 100% inaccurate, especially in Dr. Marley and I's world, okay? We're nervous system doctors. We are, our ultimate goal is to clear any pressure, irritation, and interference on your nervous system. And the World Health Organization right there says the headaches are among the most common disorders of the what? Right, though. Right. And one third of all neurological consultations are for headaches. One third of all consultations. And anyone in here been to a neurological consultation? Can you get in like tomorrow if you're having a migraine today? No, you can't. Neurologists are swamped, right, with really, really big problems of the nervous system. And we have to go there for our headaches because we have no answers, right? So when we do see a neurologist, or even when we go to our medical doctors, what's the most common thing we're going to be, what's, what is their route of action for us? Medicine. Medicine, right? That is the medical doctor's route of action most times. So these are the most common medications for headache treatment. So analgesics, anybody know what that means? It's not anal. <laughs> it's pain relief. Pain relief, okay? So pain relief. Meds that just provide you pain relief. Antiemetics are for nausea and vomiting. Who in here has migraines? Anybody get nausea and vomiting with their migraines? A lot of people do, right? So when we, get, when we go to medical doctors, say we're getting these migraines and they make us throw up, very oftentimes we get uh, prescribed to us a drug to stop the vomiting, okay? Another one is just specific anti-migraine medication. That's going to be more along the lines of the pain relief. And then finally, prophylactic. Anybody know what prophylactic means? Yeah, it's a big word, but all it means is preventative. So there are such things as preventative headache medication. I'm sure some of you, some of you maybe have been on them or you know people who have. I'm talking to people who get one migraine a week, so they take migraine meds their entire life, day in, day out, just to prevent a migraine, okay? But the interesting thing, also from the World Health Organization, is down here, medication overuse headaches, MOH. Those are the, pri the very most common, what they call secondary headaches, okay? So, Tension headaches, migraine headaches, those are what we call primary headaches. Secondary headaches are things like headaches caused from your headache medication. Is that nuts? <laughs> Did I say that correctly? So they're telling us, the World Health Organization is telling us that the most common cause of a secondary headache is from medication that we're taking for our primary headaches. That's not fair, right? I mean, we didn't sign up for that. Nobody goes into the medical doctor and says, give me medicine to stop my headaches, even though it's going to lead to a different kind of headache. And then we get put on a pill for that, right? And you guys all know what I'm talking about. We get put on one med for something, and then possibly a medicine for the next thing caused by the first thing, and it's madness. And I know everybody in the room knows that. That's why you're here. You guys are the ones looking for a better, different solution, but that's, that's powerful right there, right? So today, we're going to be talking about a couple main flavors of headaches. If you don't see yours up there, please don't panic. Um, there's no like specific case management for myself or probably Monica where, oh, you have cluster headaches, then it's going to be an exact adjustment or an exact hold right here. So in no way do I feel like if your title's not up there that, you're st that there's still no hope for you from me or Monica. I just want to clarify that. Um, but what I do want to say is headaches aren't normal, okay? And that's something like the big take-home message, one of the big take-home messages from today is if you're getting headaches, it's not normal. You know, people say to me on my first consultation with them where I'm getting to know their case history, trying to figure out if I can help them, and they say, oh, I just get normal headaches, and I have to, like, pause and say, what do you mean normal headaches, right? But we've been conditioned to believe that, you know, we just wear out over time, right? Like, we're perfect as newborns, and then kind of years pass, and we just wear out, and we're no good anymore, and these things are just supposed to happen to us. But we're hardwired to be healthy, you guys, so headaches are never normal, okay? We need to remember that. So today I'm going to be going over just a couple dangerous beliefs when it comes to headaches. 
As a health and wellness expert, I know one major thing to be true, that if we want different health outcomes, we have to have different beliefs when it comes to our health, right? We have to shift our paradigm, because if we keep thinking the same thing about health and where health comes from and the proper way to achieve optimal health, we're never going to get different outcomes. Can we all, can we all understand that? So one of the things that we have to change is our beliefs about health. So a lot of us believe, and I've been there before, that headaches are the problem, right? When we have a symptom, we seem to think that that's the problem. So if we can just get rid of the problem, we're better, right? But it's, a, it's actually wrong, because the headaches aren't the problem. They're the sign that you have a problem. Shake your head yes if you understand that. Awesome, cool. So it's a sign from our body that there's something going on. So if we're constantly treating the headache, we're never getting to the root cause of the headache, OK? Dangerous belief number one. So what's the answer, right? What's the answer to the headaches? What's the answer to the issue? Is it medicine? We just talked about medicine, all right? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, too. Or is it that we just should <coughs> ignore it, get used to it, like try to move on with life with our headaches? And a lot of people do that, guys, and it breaks my heart all the time. These people say, well, I just thought I'd have to have these headaches the rest of my life. But I'm here to tell you guys that if we can help you guys find the cause to your headaches, there's a definite better way, okay? Second dangerous belief, and this one's tricky, is that drugs work. Because do drugs work? They do, right? They do. But it also depends on our objective. So if you came to me one day and said, Dr. Heather, I'm having this wicked muscle spasm in my neck. I can't turn either direction. I'm so spastic. I don't know what to do. Help me. Should I take my muscle relaxer? I'm going to look at you and say, first of all, that's your call. But second of all, what's your objective, right? Because if your objective is to possibly decrease some of the spasm in the muscle short term, give you some temporary pain relief because you're dying, then is the drug going to work? Most likely it will, right? But what about people who come in with cholesterol medication, right? Doc, should I take this? Once again, that's yours to decide, but what's your objective? Do you just want to artificially lower your cholesterol number while at the same time there's an internal battle in your blood system? Or are you hoping to actually regain your health, decrease your cholesterol naturally, and live a longer, healthier, happier life, right? So drugs work, if, you know, they can work, and, but they always, always, always come with a risk, right? We can all agree on that too. All right, so anyone who comes to any of my classes sees this picture every time because I love it. We even have it hanging in our office. Um, you know, we can think of this picture today as the tip of the iceberg. Those are the headaches, right? Those are the things we see, feel, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we're constantly chipping away at the top and never paying attention to the true cause, you know, we're not getting any better, right? We might feel like we're doing better, but we're actually, we could be potentially making the problem worse by ignoring it and treating the symptom. So in our office, anyone who comes into our office understands that education is part of our mission. That's why we're here today. We want to teach the public. We truly feel like there's a void in, in our world, even in Cheyenne, Wyoming, on true health, true health care, and how to live our best, healthiest life. So we don't want people to just believe in chiropractic and believe in the wellness paradigm. We want people to understand, right? So we like to create understanders because we have a poster in our office that says the chiropractic principles are like gravity. They work whether you believe in them or not, okay? So chiropractic and what we teach, it works. It's not a belief system, but we want to understand it, all right? And we, like I just said before, if we're going to change our outcomes, we have to go way back to our thoughts, our thoughts on health so we can change our behaviors when it comes to health and get different outcomes. And the most important thing, you guys, is when you're having a symptom like a headache, are we listening? And how, how are we interpreting, interpreting that symptom? Are we taking a medication to shut it down? Because I promise you right now that you're going to have better health outcomes if you learn how to interpret your body symptoms better and respond to them in a more efficient way. Okay? I also love this slide, as many of you know. But symptoms really tell you a lot about your health. Okay? So this illness, wellness continuum, you guys can think of negative 10, you know, premature death, dying, Neutral point is zero, positive tense and purple, like vibrant, happy health. Every person in this room is on that continuum somewhere. I want you to, in your mind, place yourself. Where are you guys at? Are you happy? Are you disabled? Do you have symptoms? Do you have little tiny warning signs that something's not wrong in your body? Little whispers? Or do you have screams? How about do you feel good? Do you feel like you don't have any symptoms? You feel like you're healthy, right? 
Or, or are you like most of you in the room where you're stepping more into this realm, where you're in the education stage, learning more about your body and how to treat it better, and you're growing and being more aware, right? We're all on here somewhere. <clears throat> the tricky part is nobody's stagnant. So every decision we make when it comes to our lifestyle is pushing us one direction or the other, okay? It's a constant motion. And whatever decisions we're making is going to push us one way or another, all right? And Monica and I, our goal is to push you guys in the purple, right? We want to bring you guys with us to more of the wellness side. We have so many people who think that there's just like sick, healthy, sick, healthy, and that when you have symptoms and you're on an antibiotic for 14 days, you're here. But as soon as you're off and your symptoms are gone, we're way back up to the healthy. And that's not how it works, okay? So we need to recognize that this wellness journey is a step-by-step, -step, and everything we do every day is going to bring us one direction or the other, okay? All right, those are my girlies. Love them to death. That was, uh, like, almost two years ago now. We've got Quinn, the blondie, Nora, the big girl, the <coughs> girl um, Dr. Marley and I have a set of brown rules that lives in everything that we teach and preach in our office, and it, it's as follows. So I'm going to kind of break these out for you. If this is our health paradigm, if you will, okay? So number one, healthy is normal. Like, normal. We are born to be healthy. That is our default state, okay? If we're not healthy or we're struggling with our health, there's two reasons. Toxicity, deficiency, okay? Our bodies are either getting too much of something, a, a toxic dose, and then we become ill or sick, or we're not getting enough of something, we are ill and sick. So it's a constant battle between toxicity, toxicity and deficiency if we're not healthy, okay? Number two, your body is smart. Any parents in here? Awesome. A lot of parents, right? So, um, have you guys ever, I know you did, like, you know, years ago when you, when you were growing your baby in your belly, but just thinking about, like, how awesome our bodies are, that two teeny tiny cells that are literally so small you need a magnifying glass to see them, or a microscope, come together, and in 270 days, we have a breathing, screaming, pooping, crying, <laughs> cooing baby. It's insanely amazing, right? And we all recognize that. When we have our baby, we are just blown away by the power of the body and how amazing it is. And then, as new moms and dads, we watch our babies start to smile for their first time, roll over, right? Reach all these milestones. Look at them. They're holding their head up. And look at the baby giggles. And now they're crawling. And they're sitting. And oh my gosh, that first year of life, we're amazed constantly. Am I right? And then what happens, guys? Maybe the first, like, three, five years, we're like that. But once we're our age, we just think we suck. We're like, my body's breaking down. I don't have any of that intelligence left that was forming my body. But we do. We constantly do, and we never, ever lose that, okay? So your body is intelligent, always. It's always working to regain health. Has anyone ever seen a picture of a lung on cigarettes and then a lung 30 days off of cigarettes? let alone years, I mean, it's restoring. Your body's constantly restoring your body back toward health, okay? Number three, your nervous system is the master system of the body. So we know that it's like your body's computer. It's the master. It's so important, in fact, that our, we have a bony skull to protect our brain because it's fragile, and we have a bony suit of armor or skeleton to protect the nerves because there's more fragile than, you know, soft spaghetti noodles. So that's our master system, and our Spine is the suit of armor to protect it, okay? And that innate intelligence that I'm telling us makes our body smart courses along the nerves at all times. That's how our body heals, that's how we function. And then the last thing with our paradigm is that just modern life is stressful. Can we get an amen on that, right? I mean, like, what is, even probably when, like, my mom was growing up, life was different, slower, more simple. There was no social stress. That's, we are bombarded with computerized techn technological stresses right now. And that's not going away. It's going to keep coming and keep coming. So we can't avoid the stressors, but we can figure out better ways to adapt to it through our nervous system. All right, everybody doing okay? Yes, okay. I need some water. So the big idea for, the, for my portion of today is the word subluxation. Can everybody say that with me? Subluxation. Awesome. So our patients know this word, but I'm going to pretend like they don't. For anybody in here who has not seen a chiropractor or had this explained to them, I'm going to do my best right now to explain how chiropractic care can help with headaches and what even is the funky word subluxation, okay? So this is the spine. <laughs> now, it's well understood, we know, that a healthy spine and nervous system leads to optimal health, okay? It's well recognized by informed healthcare practitioners. 
even Hippocrates way back in the day used to say, look well with the spine for the cause of disease. Do you guys remember that quote? Okay, so it's well, you know, well-informed healthcare practitioners know that a misalignment in the spine can prevent you from experiencing optimal health. So what a subluxation is, it's a minor misalignment in the vertebral column. That misalignment is going to start causing endangering stress on the nerve root, the spinal cord, and the brain itself. Okay? When this subluxation goes undetected or uncorrected for any amount of time, our body's going to eventually start telling us that it's there. All right? And we need to remember that this nerve is super important. I just told you guys the nerve system is the master system. So our brain and our body are constantly communicating two-way traffic at all times. All right? If we have a subluxation irritating the nerve, we're going to have kind of weak signals coming out of that nerve, or we're going to have pain coming out of that nerve, we're going to have dysfunction coming out of that nerve. Does all of that make sense so far? Awesome. Okay, so when we how do we get subluxation? Well, there's a couple things, three to be exact, so I should say three things. In chiropractic, we talk about stress and how stress causes subluxation. You know, for, for the sake of time today, I'm not going to go into every single one of these, all three of them, but the physical stressors are going to be the macro traumas, you know, the car accidents, the slips and falls, the bike accidents, that sort of thing. We've all also got micro traumas that can cause subluxation. It's the day in and day out micro traumas that we do, you know, our posture at the workplace, driving, how we sit on our couch, our sleeping positions, carrying babies on a hip. All of those little things, day in and out, actually contribute to 90% of the subluxations we see in our practice. Okay? There's also things called chemical or uh, chemical stresses or toxins. I can't talk about those today because I don't have time, but those are the molds the beauty products, the cleaning products, right? The environmental air that we're breathing in, all of those toxins, even comes in the form of our food that we consume, okay? And then the emotional stress or the thoughts. It's crazy that thoughts can affect our nervous system and actually create subluxation in our spine and probably mess with our cranium, as Monica's gonna talk to. But the science behind that is too deep for me to dive into today. I have a whole class on stress where I teach how that affects the spine. But those three things, thoughts, traumas, toxins, are the way that we can create subluxation in our spine. For anybody who's been in our practice, they know we see a lot of kids, right? And people say, why would a kid need to see a chiropractor? But you guys all just told me your parents, most of you, right? So we've seen that a lot of times our subluxations can actually occur when we're little ones. Maybe problems we're dealing with today, we've been dealing with since we were little. Learning to like walk, learning to ride bikes. I mean, how many times, Monica, do you see your kid falling in? Right? I know. And then sometimes we, we actually notice that the first subluxation occurs in the birth process, depending on how traumatic it was. Did the doctor have to pull the baby out forceps with vacuum? With a C-section, those things are way more common than we like to admit, but those, those things right there can create the first subluxation. And as I just showed you guys, it takes some time for the body to actually respond to that nerve pressure because our bodies are amazingly smart and adaptive. So sometimes by the time we're symptomatic, the problem's been there for a while. Everybody with me? Awesome. Oh, I'm going to show you the breaker system. So we like to kind of um, equate chiropractic in, in the most simple term possible, kind of like a breaker in your house. Right? Except our designer is way smarter. <laughs> we don't just have one nerve going to each organ, so we've got a lot of overlap. Um, you know, if you blow a fuse at home, you have to like reboot everything. Uh, but it's kind of the same thing, you guys. It, in our office, we're looking for where in your spine you have that breaker out. Where are we seeing that the nerve system's not functioning because it's irritated? And ultimately, that can cause more than just headaches, right? It can cause more than just pain because your nerve system supplies every organ tissue and cell in your body every hormone in your body, so we have to figure out where your breaker shut off and if we can get it turned back on, get that proper flow restored from your brain. So just a better picture for you guys, I have this, anybody who's not a chiropractic patient wants to come check this out afterwards, please come up, get your hands on it, look at how awesome the spine is and the disc. Um, but this is a subluxation, this is the picture of a subluxation, this is what's happening in our spines a lot of times when we don't even know it, all right? So it's that misalignment, we get soft tissue damage because of it, look at the disc, it's hot, it's irritated, right? And then because of that, the muscle, the nerve is inflamed, and then when that happens, we get a muscle spasm because our body's smart or stupid. Sorry. Yes, so when we have a misaligned joint that's instable, our body's going to stabilize it, grip on tight and spasm. Okay? Now, is it smart or stupid to take a muscle relaxer for that sometimes? Right? Not super smart because the body's actually trying to keep that from possibly blowing the whole disc. All right? So our body's trying to protect it. Then we get a joint fixation. So that's the, the times where people are like, something just feels stuck. I can tell something needs to pop. Right? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this needed to pop. 
top, okay? And then finally, um, elevated stress hormones. And I talked to you guys, that I, I'm not going to go over the stress response today, but just know that a subluxation in itself causes a stressor in the body and creates the body to shoot into fight or flight mode. So those people that live constantly stressed out, constantly, you know, on the verge, high blood pressure, all that sort of thing, that can be coming from the spine, okay? And ultimately, with that nerve irritation, we can have, obviously, pain in headaches, okay? So, let's see if I fix this. Maybe. <laughs> Who's laughing at me? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this is the Nora Jean, mostly a Nora Jean slide here. <laughs> This is all my kid, and these are just some of the macro traumas she's been through. So I just wanted to give an appreciation for all of us in the crowd thinking, like, I don't know, I was kind of one of those kids that didn't do much. But your mom has pictures like this, right? And can we all recognize the fact that, like, these issues could have caused headaches for her? Like, this could have been something that if her mom and daddy weren't chiropractors that were checking her spine every other day, it could have created an issue that maybe when she was 20, she was saying, I've got this neck issue, we take an x-ray and we see, golly, that's been in her spine a long time. So, we have a bunch of macro traumas, whether we remember them or not. The micro traumas look more like this, right? This is Quinn. Quinn came with her head off like this. But you guys know you never wake a sleeping toddler, right? right. They'll fix that later, but don't wake them up. So, um, but more importantly than that is just the traumas from tech stress. I mean, who in here has a cell phone? Who in here has a smartphone? Right? So we spend tons of time on our phone nowadays, and I'm not saying to stop. I'm not one of those crazy ladies that's going to be like, better never have your phone out here in my office, right? But we have to be better with it. We have to hold it up. We need to correct our posture. And ultimately from this, you guys, what I'm trying to get the point across is what are we doing to reconcile these micro traumas, right? When are we going to the gym to reconcile the fact that we just sat at the, our computer with our head in front of us like eight hours, right? When are we doing that? Um, when are we getting our chiropractic adjustments? When are we getting massage work done to reconcile all this? Because we're going to continue to have these micro traumas. We just have to reconcile them. Okay? There's a new phenomenon now, actually, like a labeled diagnosable issue called tech neck. That's just spending too much time on our technological devices. And what that's doing to our cervical curve and what that's doing to the muscles and the, the subluxation problems that it's creating are huge, you guys. So bad that they're calling, they're saying that. Sitting is the new smoking. So constant sitting with our neck in front of us is literally taking years off of our life, all right? And that posture, day in and day out, with our head in front of us, who goes home with a headache after that all day? I do, and nobody, all right? I'm sure Monica will talk some about that. So, Dr. Marley, come on up. <laughs> I would have picked on somebody else, but I feel nice today. This is a bowling ball, clearly. We all have one on our shoulders, but Dr. Marley's going to have an extra one. So if you'll kind of just stand out in the middle of the room. So <clears throat> all of us have a bowling ball on our shoulders, somewhere between 12 to 14 pounds, you know, as, as an adult, okay? Now that's heavy, but if we carry our posture correctly, that's going to be huge on, that's going to help us a ton with our cervical muscles, okay? And with the subluxation patterns in the neck. If we don't, it's leading us down the path of subluxation and muscle problems, okay? So Dr. Murray is going to hold that in a locked and loaded position. You know, his, his wrist bent, elbow down, and he can probably hold that. How, do you guys think Dr. Ryan can hold that for a while? Mm, I got all day. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty easy, right? So then what if we shift him out about five degrees to there? Do you think that got heavier on him? Right? And what if he has to hold that all day? Is he going to get a little tired, get a little fatigued? Okay, let's move it out just another five degree. How's the bicep feeling? Burn him a little? <laughs> right? Can you guys, does this make sense though? Right? So if we were standing, just keep holding. If we were standing with our <laughs> ear directly over our shoulder in a normal position, our head should feel almost weightless. <clears throat> the further that it comes out, the heavier it gets. Thank you. Okay, so we should remember the, the bowling ball the next time you guys are sitting at home in front of your computer at, or at work, do a posture break. And I'll actually teach you that right now. So everybody put your pens down. <clears throat> Sit up straight in your chair. This is called a Brugger's posture break, okay? So all we do is simply roll the shoulders down and back, squeeze together like a pinch and a pencil between your shoulder blades, and point your chin to the sky. And take a couple deep breaths and relax. You guys feel that there in the middle back, upper, pill back, right? 
feels so good. We spend our days like this, writing and doing stuff, and helping kids and whatever. We don't ever take time for that extension, okay? So let's start incorporating that into our daily routine, you guys. All right, a couple more things, and then I'm going to let Monica take over. So I'd like to share just some classic kind of chiropractic case management um, for the three main topics that I chose today as far as headaches go. Um, stress headaches, you guys. What do I call stress headaches? I call those cervicogenic. So those are more neck in nature. So when we have a cervicogenic headache, it's somewhere coming from our cervical spine. And it's typically after a really stressful day, a long day at work, a lot of time on the computer, um, one of those days where you've just been frazzled all day and your muscles are just kind of talking to you up here in the occiput, those are what we tend to see in our practice as stress headaches. And we all have one, or 10, right? Okay. So in my office, um, we tend to, we take x-rays on every new patient unless they're expecting or a child, because we want to know what's going on in their spine, we never want to guess. And we tend to find issues in, all along that cervical spine, C1 through C7, sometimes the upper thoracic spine, T1 through 5, because of this, right? Because of that motion. So, everyone in the room here is sitting next to someone they know. No, yes. We're going to touch each other's cervical spines real quick. Okay? So, the, let me just tell you guys when I went to chiropractic college, <laughs> yes, it good. It was like our third day of school, and our anatomy teacher was like, everybody, touch your neighbor's clavicle. And I was like, I don't even know this person. And now I'm like the most touchy-feely person in the world. So just know, I want you guys to know the anatomy that we're talking about. And Dr. Marley, I'm going to have you go around, double check, make sure they're feeling where their C2 spinous is, C7 spinous is. Okay? Let's do it. So um, <laughs> let's, one person each, right hand up, or whoever, go to your neighbor, go to the base of the skull. Base of the skull. Here, I'll just my own Diane. So when you go straight under the skull and push a little, do you guys feel that big, huge bump? The big bump right under the skull. That's a C2 vertebra. It's huge, right? Go way down the neck until you feel the next big bump coming out, like a big prominent bump coming just above the shoulder blades. That's C7, okay? C2 through C7. Finally, migraines. These are a beast in their own, and everybody knows that. 
I had migraines as a teenager. I remember what it was like. It's, it's horrific. I would never wish that on anybody, and I know a lot of people in the room have had them as well. We see in our practice, and I'm sure most of you agree, is that migraines are more of a hormone issue, okay? They're more of a hormone issue. So this slide, you guys can tell, is different than the other slides because there's an arrow pointing to the low back, and I won't make you guys feel each other's migraines. <laughs> but there's a huge plexus of nerves here that control our hormone release, especially our androgens and estrogens, our, our sex hormones, okay? Those are the things that are secreted from our ovaries. Um, especially females, obviously. Um, so, but when we have... Uh, all right. I told you headaches don't discriminate. Um, it, what we find is that, you know, most people think, like, I have migraines, it's got to be coming from my neck, but it's a tricky one because sometimes, as Dr. Warren can attest to, it's something coming from the low back as well, so that's where we have to dive really deep figure out can we find a nerve system issue and correct these migraines, help you guys correct your migraines. I wanted to do a quick little plug for one nutrient that I think is massive for people with headaches. It's, up, it's said that 75% of all of us are deficient in magnesium nowadays because we just don't get it from our food sources like we're supposed to, and unless we supplement with it, we're very highly deficient. And being deficient in magnesium can cause so <coughs> many health concerns that we can just chase all day and never find the cause of if our magnesium levels are low. So that's something Dr. Marley and I meet with our new patients about um, and determine if we think they, they should start taking a magnesium supplement for their headaches. There's been research that shows after 10 weeks of magnesium, people have no more headaches. 80% of the people in the study. So it's powerful, okay? Really powerful stuff. Um, we do, this is just a picture, and I brought ours so somebody can come up and look at it. Um, magnesium is awesome stuff. All right, guys, I'm not seeing Monica, but I hope that I got my point across to you guys today that, like, headaches aren't, there's something, there's other avenues, and oftentimes we are the last one. People come to us, like, I've tried everything else, somebody told me to try a chiropractor, right? And we take no offense to that. But, you know, there is something that can be done. There's a lot of little things that can be done, all right? And Monica's going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, but this is what we do in our office, okay? So that thing that Dr. Marley's holding and running down Cole's back, that's called a nervoscope. Any one of our patients know what that is. That nervoscope helps us detect heat and inflammation off every nerve coming out of your spine. So we can find exactly where your, your body is showing us that inflammation. We don't have to guess, okay? So we use very objective criteria in our office to determine which bones are misaligned and which bones could be attributing to the headaches. So number one, instrumentation. Uh, motion static palpation, we have to, uh, you know, we'll be touching the spine, we'll be moving you guys, feeling for motion in the joint. We visualize, we, as you can see, pull that kind of a shirt off. In our office, patients put on a cool little t-shirt, and they'll take their shirts off because we don't want to just guess about your health. We got to see what we're looking at, see where we see the muscle spasms, where we see the inflammation. So she did lock the door. <laughs> um, um, and then finally, we relate it back to x-ray. Um, always, always, always. And patients love seeing their x-ray because they look at it and seriously, 10 times out of 10, they're like, it all makes sense. It all makes sense, right? Um, so how do you want to feel self Well, you have to get checked because guess what? Guess how much, how, how much percentage of our nervous system feels pain? Just, just shout an answer out. Marta, how many percent of our nervous system feels pain? Okay, what did you say? 100? That's a good guess. How many, Eric? How, what percent? 200%. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Okay, Sandra, one last guess. What percentage of our nervous system is actually deals with feeling pain? 20. Good guesses, guys. It's 10. 10% of our nerve system deals with pain. The other 90% is for function. Things like you're breathing 10,000 times today, you're not thinking about it. Your heart's bumping 10,000 gallons of blood today, you're not thinking about it. Okay, so our nerve system is for muscles, is for things like that. It's really more important, honestly, that we stay alive than if we feel pain, right? So 10% of our nerve system is for, for pain. So a lot of times subluxation can be silent. You might not even know what's in our spine because our body's wreaking havoc somewhere else and our attention's being diverted there. So I love this picture because look at all those nerves, man. Those things are awesome. I know Monica's probably like drooling over this picture right now too. But our bodies are so, so intricate and we just, we know that we can help you guys. So we're so thankful you're here. I'm gonna let Monica step up here and while she gets her stuff ready, we're gonna do one more exercise. Okay, everyone, stand up, please. So these are the YWTLs. 
okay? You can call them Y W L T and say you will love these. I don't know, just come up with an acronym, but you can see Dr. Marley going over these. You see the Y, the W, the T, the L. So I'm gonna stand up in front and talk, talk you through how to do these properly. This is a really great exercise to combat those micro traumas we just talked about. So you're gonna be looking straight ahead and your hands and your thumbs to the back. You're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together and create a Y. Hold that. Come down all the way, make a W. You should have a really tight squeeze between the shoulder blades right now. Head nice and neutral for me. Straight out and create a big T. Palms up, please. And then shoot those shoulders right in your rib cage and form two L's. Two L's is the point there. So let's do them again, everybody. Y, M, C, A, W, <laughs> T. Good. And squeeze all the way down, L. Do you guys feel that coming down the spine there? Feel that that's kind of working those extensor muscles more. So I want you to incorporate that and posture break more into your daily habits, okay? And from here, I'm going to let Monica talk about her magic. So let's all welcome Monica. Hi, everyone. Awesome. I'm going back on because I broke it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Heather. Wasn't that amazing information already? Like, it's just, I know that we probably all have heard that stuff before, but. The more you hear it, the more it really sinks into your head and um, it makes you understand like how intricate our human and amazing our, our bodies are, right? So um, as Dr. Heather discussed, thoughts, traumas, and toxins, um, when there's an excessive amount in our body and we're unable to cope with it, that's when stress starts occurring. So I see this in my office in the form of pain and mostly with postural issues, as Dr. Heather talked about, the forward neck protrusion, the weight, the weight of the world is on your shoulders and you get your shoulders up to your ears and you're driving and you're like really angry and, and this is like the posture that we end up with and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, chill out, <laughs> right? And then like sleeping postures is when Dr. Heather touched on that as well, but um, so many people, how many people actually sleep on your back when you go to sleep? So that's something you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then side sleepers, we have a lot of side sleepers, I would guess, yeah. And how about belly sleepers? Yeah, yeah. So all of that, like the, the natural position is for your body to be in this anatomical position on your back, like. Like you're just sleeping like this and I know that that's like when you think about it that doesn't seem like it's very comfortable but that's where your body and your spine can stay in alignment when your spine is in alignment your your muscles and soft tissue can stay in alignment as well when you start sleeping on your side or get, getting on your belly and stuff it starts messing with things in your neck and your shoulders and and our bodies are amazing and they will compensate for a very long time before they start breaking down but when they do start breaking down, that's when I see the, these things of the pain in the shoulder, the pain in the rotator cuff muscles and shooting pain down the arm and, and the, the shoulder is stuck up here. And then as Dr. Heather also talked about, sleeping with kids, man, like you do not make a baby, right? And this is what we have to go through and we will be in any sleep position we can be in in order for that baby to not wake up. We're sleeping with your oh, animals. <laughs> I have two big dogs, and they curl up, and, and either I have to you know, kick them off the bed, or eventually at some point make them get off just because I can't sleep in a comfortable position. Um, and then of course husbands do this. Yeah, they, they just kind of take over, and, and then you're always the one having to uh, adjust your sleeping. Um, just kidding, husbands. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to discuss how all of these things and all of the pain that, that you start to feel, how that actually affects your craniosacral system as well as your muscular system. And then I'm going to give you some hands-on, drug-free, non-invasive approaches and give you some information about that that can actually help with headaches as well as the compensation patterns that we've developed over the years and how, how these can help those compensation patterns. So how many people have heard of craniosacral therapy? One, two, <laughs> Dr. Barley, you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, then how many have had a cranial treatment? One, from me. <laughs> yes, two. <laughs> awesome, so before we get into craniosacral therapy, I wanna talk about 
the craniosacral system, which is obviously the system that the therapy is based on. So the craniosacral therapy is, or craniosacral system is a physiological system within the body that is comprised of the membrane that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. So you can see that membrane, I'm afraid to put my notes down, so I'm not gonna need them, but um, that blue membrane is what is surrounding the brain and spinal cord. It also, it goes from the cranium all the way down to the sacrum. And I need me one of these in my office. I've got, I've got separate, uh, told you I've got separate parts up here, but this is all together. You really did? I did. Um, so this guy is awesome. So it's going, this is the occiput of the cranium. The craniosacral system, that membrane actually surrounds the brain. It is, attaches to all of the bones of the cranium. And this is my little guy that you guys can stare at now. So it attaches to all the bones of the cranium. It actually is a tube that surrounds that spinal cord, goes right in the middle. So this spine is what is protecting the spinal cord. And then all of the nerves, you can kind of see it in here where the spinal cord is. Um, I do have a pointer. All of the nerves have to innervate that tube in order to get out into the spine and to get to this point right here. So then it feeds out into the body. So that tube is so important to the central nervous system because that is what is housing the central nervous system. So um, the primary function of the craniosacral system is the production, the circulation, and reabsorption of cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is produced in the head. It travels down the spine and gets absorbed into the body down near the sacrum area. Um, the primary function of the crania, or the cerebral spinal fluid is to deliver nutrients throughout the body. It eliminates waste products, moves waste products through. And it is the physiological environment for the central nervous system to develop, live, and function. So this, this guy that nobody's heard of is so important to our health and making sure that we have everything moving and it's so connected with chiropractic because of our connection with the central nervous system. So now we'll get into craniosacral therapy. So craniosacral therapy is an osteopathic technique. So we, we use the bones of the cranium in order to release restrictions within that membrane. So as I mentioned, the, that membrane is attached to all the bones of the cranium, comes down the, the spinal canal and, and gets attached down at the sacrum as well. So we're using the bones of the cranium and the sacrum as handles per se to work that entire system. Um, and if there's any restriction in the head or any restriction, I'm sorry, in the cranial bones themselves or any restriction in that membrane, then I'm able as a craniosacral therapist to, to make some gentle manipulations and adjustments to that in order to release those restrictions. So our bodies, as Dr. Heather already mentioned as well, our bodies have different rhythms. So we've got our resting heart rate, we've got our resting respiration, and those are things that happen automatically. Like you don't have to think about those, those happening. Just like the craniosacral system, you don't have to think about what's happening, it's just doing it. So your body is producing the cerebral spinal fluid in the head, and everything in the head is, has to adjust to that increase in fluid and pressure. So that has to go, we, we go into basically an extension and a flexion. So this is what your body is doing every time the cerebral spinal fluid is produced in the head. And as it travels down the spine, it's coming into that flexion. Well, if, you're, if, that, if anything in your cranium or anything in the surrounding membrane is restricted, your body is not able to actually accommodate that fluid pressure, so therefore you, you're feeling an intense pressure into your head, which causes headaches and other dysfunctions as well. So by being trained to feel that rhythm, this only happens six to 12 cycles per minute, by the way. It's not like it's not like your heart rate or anything, and it's not like this. It's a very gentle, very, very subtle movement throughout the whole body that is constantly happening. 
And so as a trained craniosacral therapist, I'm able to put my hands on, feel where that rhythm is not operating optimally, and that's where I go to start working on the area to, to restore function in that area. And sometimes it takes a lot longer than others. Sometimes you can leave the office and feel like everything is cured, and other times it's gonna take several different treatments in order for that to happen. So specifically for headaches, um, you know, millions of people suffer from headaches, and I, that's one of the main things that I see in my office is, is chronic headaches and migraines. And what craniosacral therapy can do is relieve the pressure in the head. Now, Dr. Heather also mentioned that sometimes it can be, it can actually be located, your, your dysfunction can be located in your low back, um, and but you're feeling it in your head. It's the same thing with, with cranial work is we, we assess, I assess the entire body to see where that dysfunction is coming from before I just start treating the head. So we make sure that we're in the right areas and start releasing those restrictions. So this gentle touch is very, very gentle. It's um, one of those things where you lay on the table and you're like, are you really doing anything to me? Because I don't feel anything until you get off the table and you're dizzy or, or lightheaded or something and you know something just occurred. Um, some people can feel it, other people can't. But what happens because of the, the association with the, the central nervous system is your body gets put into this incredibly deep state of relaxation. And when that deep state of relaxation happens, that's when your body can do the work. It's called a still point, and your body can go in and out of that several times during one session. It can go into it and stay there for a longer period of time as it's doing its work. So I'm working with the body's natural ability to heal itself, and that's another thing Dr. Heather mentioned about, you know, we started out as two cells and became what we are today. We don't forget that stuff. Our, our bodies have the ability to heal themselves if they have a facilitator or something to help them do that and to help your body remember that it's in there. We just have to get to it. Um, and something that I have as a self-help technique, um, this is called a still point inducer. I know it looks funny, but um, this can help you get into that deep state of relaxation. And it basically goes on the back of your head. It's not down here where you feel a lot of tension headaches come through. It's up just a little bit. And you might need to have a towel rolled up underneath to support your neck. But just by laying on that for about 10 minutes a day, your body can get put into that deep state of relaxation. And you can relieve headaches just by laying on this 10 minutes a day. You probably will need some additional, you know, there's. There's probably some other dysfunction going on that we need to release the, the, the cranial bones and release that um, membrane, but that can help you get through um, get through the day. The other thing I wanted to, oh, you can get those on Amazon, or you can make your own at home. You can put two tennis balls into a, a sock and tie it together and put that in your home. It's called a still point inducer. Um, and Dr. Marley gave me this torture device one time, <laughs> not too long ago. And it's called a cervical orthotic. Do any of you guys have that? I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So the first time, I, I wish I would have brought mine, but I didn't. Um, and it's just a, I don't know, it doesn't look like it's anything. A it's just a wedge. It's a pillow. wedge. Yeah, it's like a wedge pillow that you put on basically your C7 area, right? What we palpated. And um, it allows to, to help, you guys can probably explain it way better, but it basically allows to get your curvature in your cervical spine back to where it's supposed to be, correct? Yeah. Okay, something like that. Anyway, it starts out as a major torture device. I laid on it for three minutes in his office and I thought I, would, I, I might kick him if you were any closer, <laughs> but now it is a, it, it's my clutch. Like I do it every single day for 15 to 20 minutes and it is, the most amazing thing I have ever had. <laughs> and it's one of those, just like doing that um, y, YWTL thing, like immediately you feel that result and you feel the relaxation come into your body and that's how I feel with, with the cervical orthotic as well. So a couple of things that you can do at home to help with that. 
Um, so we're going to get into a little bit of massage. There's two things with massage therapy um, that the massage approach, I guess. The one is the comfort role that it plays. So you come to me when you're experiencing a, basically a stress headache and you want me to help you with that and I can and I will. And we get in there, we release all the muscles, do a little bit of cranial work and, and boom, either your headache's gone right away or it's gonna be gone very soon, soon after. The other approach would be a proactive approach or proactive role and that would be let's, let's change what your body is doing. So get on a regular schedule to where we can constantly be in once a month, once every two weeks, whatever it is for you. Get in and release those muscles and make sure that the, the duration of your headaches is less and the frequency of your headaches is less. So this makes me happy, and from what I understand, it's gonna make Dr. Marley happy as well. Um, for, for, I know that this may not look interesting and anatomy might not have been your very favorite thing, but I wanna show you sheerly the different layers of muscles that are in our our neck. So what we're showing here, is that the same? Yeah. So these muscles here are the upper trap muscles. And you can see where they attach at the base of the skull and they come down and they attach at your shoulders. They're the ones that when you get stressed, you're, you've got your, your shoulders up to your ears and it hurts after a while after you notice it. Um, so we're just gonna peel those away. And I'm not gonna talk about these muscles at all, but I just want you to see the next, here's the next layer of muscle. And then here's the next layer of muscle. And then here's the final layer of muscle. Like there, our bodies are so amazing that it takes all of those layers just for us to function up here. And what's even cooler, in my opinion, about this is like, these little guys here are actually, these are the muscles that are holding your head onto your spine. And all of these in between, these are the muscles that are allowing your spine to move the way that it does. If your spine is out of alignment at all, you're going to be affecting all of these muscles, all of the nerves that are in there, and these guys, um, for the most part, is the forward head posture that gets these guys going and, and restricted. So if, if you're getting headaches, that is a place where we absolutely are going to work. And how do they get tight? Again, we go back to this, this thing. Imagine just in this chronic position all the time, those little muscles are trying to keep your head on top of your spine, but yet we're, we're in this position all the time. So eventually it's gonna break down. It is fixable. It is, you are able to get, get that, you know, the, the muscles back into alignment and, and reduce the tension in there, but you have to work at it. You have to work at it at home, and we have to help you work with it, uh, with massage, cranial work, and, and chiropractic. You guys still with me? <coughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. So benefits of massage. I'm about done. Um, massage promotes circulation, um, increased blood flow to any area. When you when you're so restricted up here, when we massage those muscles and get them, get the, the adhesions worked out of them, it brings blood to the area, blood promotes healing, it's got all the nutrients, it's got the oxygen, and your muscles are able to function a lot better. Uh, massage decreases trigger points. So trigger points are little areas in the body that are really hypersensitive, and they can shoot pain other way, other places. So you could find a trigger point in your in that upper trap, and it'll shoot down your arm or shoot up into your head. And sometimes you get those stabbing headaches, and it could be coming from from that trigger point in your in your upper trap. Relieves muscle spasms and tension. Um, obviously, that's what you come. To, that's what traditionally you come to massage therapy for. Like, I'm super stressed and, and my, my back hurts, so you come in and get a massage and you feel all good and stuff. And that is all true, but it actually is doing something. It is relieving, it's, it's breaking up scar tissue, it's breaking up the adhesions in the muscle, and it's allowing your muscles to get back to its normal functional state. Uh, massage actually also helps to regulate hormones. When you get massage, it decreases cortisol levels, which cortisol is our stress hormone, and you increase endorphins, which is our natural painkiller, and serotonin, which is our natural feel-good uh, 
hormones. So when you get massage, that is why you go from feeling like this to that post-massage feeling, right? Where you know you feel amazing and all you want to do is sleep afterwards. Or you're super productive, one or the other. So here's some steps to success. Um, and I think this goes for, for both of us. Um, number one step to success is stop your bad habits. I like to say notice and correct. So if you notice you're up here, correct it. If you notice you're out here, correct it. The more that you're noticing, you know, the first step is to admitting you have a problem. And so when you're noticing it and you're correcting it, eventually you get to the point where it's gonna come naturally to just put everything back in alignment. And you can do it yourself. If you protrude your neck forward and sit there for a couple seconds and then put it back into alignment, those muscles back there just feel amazing. It's just such a huge difference in doing that. Um, add specific exercises. So when the doctors and I give specific exercises after your treatment, we're not just doing it because we want to sound smart and be like, hey, yeah, you should also do this. We're actually doing it because we care. We want you guys to get better. It's not that we don't want to ever see you in our office again, because we do, but that would be a great goal to have, is to never have to see you again. Although, you know, life happens, and, and you're going to get stressed, and you're going to have a, a, a micro trauma and all of that stuff, and you're going to need to see us. But if you can take care of yourself and do those exercises that we give, um, that is taking it upon yourself. And again, like Dr. Heather and Dr. Marley were saying that you just being here is such a great step that you're here to educate yourself and to understand that there are things that you can do at home as well. And get chiropractic adjustments. So I'm, our, we are so intricate, intricately, intimately related in the sense of <laughs> chiropractic and massage and craniosacral work. We're doing, different areas of the body for the same goal. Um, we're working with the central nervous system, both of us. So if, if there is a subluxation in the, in the spine anywhere, it is going to affect the soft tissue. It's going to affect the nerves. It's going to affect the muscle, the fascia, all the, all the tissue that is around it. There's no way that a subluxation is not going to also affect that soft tissue. So by getting just one or the other, that's awesome. That's a great way to start. But if you can combine both, that is going to give you the, the most optimal way of, of getting full treatment for you. All right, I'm almost done. Next steps. So what do you do with all this great information? Um, step number one, if you are already working with me on the soft tissue side, I highly recommend at least getting a consultation with Dr. Heather and Dr. Marley. Um, what that does for me, for my work on you, would be if they find where the subluxation is, we can work on that area. I may always find other restrictions as well in the soft tissue, but knowing that there's something um, you know, structurally wrong or dysfunctional, that helps me to, to plan our treatment going forward. If you're already working with them, then I highly recommend coming and getting the soft tissue work and making sure that it all is working together. And then if you haven't started your journey yet, I would recommend starting with chiropractic. Again, getting that x-ray and getting the consultation and, and just knowing that that if there is something structurally wrong, you can then add that and the, the massage and craniosacral work. And I'm gonna tell you about my offer that I have for today. Um, I do, I am offering a 60 minute treatment if you book and pay today. Um, I, my normal hour, or my normal rates are $80 per 60 minutes. I do not accept gratuity. I wanna be a part of your healthcare regimen, so I don't wanna be considered that that, oh, I just, I feel really good, so I feel like I need to tip you. I don't want that. I want you to, to come in, and we're going to help get you on your path to health. Um, so I'm offering a $25 discount on your, on your next one-hour treatment. So if you go to, I'm going to say this, and then we'll talk afterwards, but myintegrativeapproach.com is my, is, my, is my website, and it is all online booking. Um, so you go online, you book a 60-minute appointment, you use the code HEADACHE for 
for that and you get your $25 discount and that will be valid today only and then it will be gone and it's only for you guys. So um, I thank you all so much. I'm going to have Dr. Marley come back up and thank you for your time. Or what? What? I think I got one more slide on there for you. You do? Oh, yes. Oh, it's a good one. There, yeah. She's always doing that to me. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> 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 you okay? <laughs> 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 All right, was that awesome